ka pai tau ana o ka timataki rā tā tātou kōrero o te pō. Nō reiro uru mai rā ki rōtou i tā ware kōrero o ngā timutunga ki a rongo ake rā i ngā kupo o e nei o ngā karakia e aro atu nei tātou i tēnei pō. Nō reira, pe kātū rā te wakaaro ki ngā tini ai tua, ngā i tua ko kautou e kaue ko mātou e kaue. Te wakaaro wā nō rā ki te wāna o tō tātou nei kui a kui Harriet a pare kaiuru, nō reira e tangi tonu wana, e tangi tonu wana, e tangi tonu wana. Para, o ki mai rā ki a tātou te ungo rā. Nō reira, ko tā mai tātou ki runga i te i o ngā kōrero, e pāna ki te mārama tako o ngā timutunga me o nga karakia ki rotora. Ka timatake rā tā tātou kōrero ki te karakia. Ki tete o ngā karakia ko kōrero i a ketia e tātou. Nō reira, tātou rā e manawa nui ki tēnei o ngā kaupapa, tēnei te mii. Manawa tīna, manawa tīna, manawa toka, manawa toka. Tēnei o ki tō manawa ka tīna, tēnei o ki tō manawa ka toka, tēnei o ki tō manawa ka pautāi kitia. Tīna no oto manawa e manawa ora e ora. Tūturu wō iti waka maua ki a tīna, tīna, uie, tāi ki e. Ka pai, tēnā tātou, ka uri rā te reo, ki te reo tuarua o tātou. So I'd just like to welcome you all to our corridor for tonight. We've got Jamie coming in. He's he's just flown back into Wellington, so he'll be dialing in in the next 10, 15 minutes. But thought that would make a start anyway. Just wanted to acknowledge, of course, the passing of of those of our ano, those that we carry, those that you carry, those that we carry as well. Uh, and to also acknowledge the, the ano of, of Queen Harriet uh, with her passing not so long ago. Um, so our particular kaupapa tonight is focused on two of our karakia. So the last two wānanga, we've been doing two karakia from our maramataka, from our calendar for 2022, just to be able to catch up. And then as we move through into these next few wānanga leading through into December, we'll focus on the, the karakia for the month. So we'll focus on the karakia for March and the karakia for June um, tonight. Um, so we've, we've got wānanga set up for each month focused on specific karakia. Uh, if you don't have a, a copy of the calendar, let us know. Uh, send an email through to office at ngati, uh, ngatimutunga.iwi.nz and we'll be able to sort that out for you to ensure that you've got a copy for your ore. Uh, so our karakia we'll focus on is the one for March. Uh, now that Jamie's coming in, he's, he's got uh, some really lovely kōrero in relation to this particular karakia. Um, if, you, if you're not aware of the name of this karakia, it's called Te Ara o Tokomaru. So the pathway of our waka, tokomaru. Uh, if that, that provides the context for the words, it provides the context for the karakia. Outside of that context, there's definitely some lovely imagery that we can see within this, this karakia, just from the words that, that are used. Um, in the previous wānanga, we've talked about this concept of duality. And of course, in those first two lines there, we, we see that duality again of uta and tai. Uh, we also see it in, in ao and po. Uh, we see it in nuku and rangi. And we've got a couple of examples there of that uh, concept of, of duality. Um, so if we just look at the words, um, bearing in mind that while it's about our, our waka and the, the pathway that our waka took, um, we've just got some, some real lovely imagery there that... Um, uh, that paints some some beautiful pictures in, in your mind when you consider it. So, of course, rere manu, so, of course, in reference to our manu uh, and the flight of the manu uh, and the direction that it travels. Uh, the concept of wai order and um, te tangi o te manu. Uh, so, we'll, we'll hear the word, um, whether it's ki, um, tangi o te manu. Uh, you also hear words like kōrihi. Te manu. So if you think of our of our pa here in Waitara, manu korihi, the, the singing of the bird. Uh, and there's also a particular kupu here in Taranaki that, that you, you hear at times. Uh, 
so rather than kōri here, you, you may hear waraki. Uh, so these are all kupu, all words that you may hear in reference to te tangi o te manu. Um, so as it refers to the, the call of the bird um, in line three. Te uh, uio uio and uh, the disturbance, the, the movement that causes like a, a whirlwind. Um, these, these next three kupu, so ruku, uh, if we think of diving, that's one of the ways I always recall the word ruku. So when we go out diving for kaimoana, for mataitai, you tend to hear the phrase um, ruku kaimoana, ruku mataitai. Uh, so of course the dive. Um, puia or pu, um, pupu wake, uh, you, you may be familiar with. Uh, koro pupu, so that's um, in, in our kōrero, of course, in our, in our waka wai. Uh, ka koro pupu te puna, e kore e mimiti. Uh, so to be able to, to rise up, to be able to, to bubble up. So ka puia, ka taupua, to then come to rest. And then it gives references as to where where it um, rests. So if we just look simply at the words, you could um, definitely gain a translation or understanding from that, just from the words and the images that it paints within your mind. Uh, if we then refer to the actual name of, of the karakia, Te Aro Tokomaru, that particular karakia has the ones that I've seen, and it's really the um, the Te Kōhu Kārewa program that Jamie, Hemi and Te Pōhi have done that gives you a real in-depth understanding of both verses of this karakia. In the calendar, we've only provided one verse, um, but you're, there, there is the opportunity to, to delve in deeper into the kōrero and watch some of those Te Kōhu Kārewa series because Jamie, Hemi and Te Pōhi talk about this particular karakia in depth, and not just this first verse, but the, um, the second verse. Uh, so if we think of casting our minds back to Hawaii uh, before the departure of, of Tokomaru, uh, and then consider some of the thoughts that would have been going through their minds in order to find Aotearoa, some of the signs that they would have been searching for, um, some of the tohu, that uh, would have helped them and guided them on their pathway. And, and the next karakia will refer to some of some of those tohu as well. Uh, but with that, I wonder if I invite Jamie to come in and just provide a bit more of an overview from his perspective. Um, and just listening to uh, Mitch, I think he is, he's covered everything. Um, just some context. So when we, this form of karakia, um, they're often referred to as tapuai waka, um, or another name is awa awa, or a bit or wairia. So those are the sort of three variants of these particular um, karakia. And they largely relate to uh, the movement of waka. Um, and there are different forms of these particular karakia from the time in which a tree is felled and that particular tree is carved and the, the waka is, is brought from the forest um, to the ocean. And then of course, from the ocean um, on the journey. And uh, one of the features of these karakia is the fact that it's the, you often see the use of manu or reference to manu. Um, and so from, a, from the sort of Māori worldview standpoint, I mean, manu represent movement um, in flight. And so you often see within a lot of the, the karakia or waiata or um, yeah, references to, to, to birds because it speaks about flight and movement. Um, and so, you know, te ara o tokomaru, it's really talking about the path in which tokomaru has, um, has taken. And so, um, as Mitch sort of pointed out, the duality, but it's saying kārere manu kiuta, kārere manu kitai. So that's very much speaking about, you know, that movement from land to the ocean, um, and often you see these, as Mitch has sort of said, you know, he karanga, um, you know, a likening um, that call to that of the bird, which is basically the call is waiora. We're looking for, um, you know, to be sort of imbued with um, well-being and, um, yeah, well-being. Um, and then, you know, the other imagery. So you've got the flight of the bird. You imagine the bird is sort of, you know, the call is waiora, waiora, waiora. Um, 
in terms of providing a bit of inspiration and then, you know, tutu a wheel wheel inuku, tutu a wheel wheel irangi. Um, you know, when, when, you're, when you're going on a journey, it's, it's never easy. Um, and so it's talking about, you know, the winds, which again, from a symbolic sort of standpoint, again, speak of um, navigation. Um, and it speaks about, you know, the energy of both, you know, the sort of the, the ocean or the, the, the land or the ocean and, and the sky. So that, that movement and that dynamism that is happening. Um, and I love the, you know, and you think about that line that sort of Mitch spoke about, karuku kapuya, you know, imagine the waka or even imagine a bird. So you, you've often seen the kawa and other birds, you know, when they dive into the water and when they emerge, that's basically a likening how a waka sort of dips into the water like that of a bird that dives into the water. Um, so, you know, karuku kapuya, and when the bird emerges, it's, there's a moment of... Um, um, of rest, that's that that topua piece, you know, it's that sort of movement. Um, I don't know, Hwani, you might be a bit of a surfer in the surfing days, you know, when you go through, when you duck dive through the wave, you come up, I tell you what, it's it's quite good to sort of come out of that and it's a bit of a sigh and that's what that topua sort of reference is. And then kei matanuku, kei matarangi, kei duru o Hawaii nui e tauana. Um, and again, that duality, because, you know, we're always thinking about the tangible, the intangible, the physical, the metaphysical, um, and you know it's that yin and yang, um, and sort of reminding us of our origins, which is Hawaii, uh, wherever that might be, depending on um, who you are. And so, yeah, so I think you know beautiful imagery, and all of our karakia start think about the picture that it creates. Um, and so the context here, when you think about it, it's about te aro o maru, it's about movement, it's about creating a path or clearing a path, um, you know, that's the context, so it can be applied quite broadly in terms of even, you know, how you start a hui, because you're basically, again, you're embarking on a bit of a journey within a hui, um, um, it can also be used as a bit of a, a short wairea, or, you know, as you go on to a marae, taki taki, um, you know, you often hear the taki taki as you're going on to a marae or into a new space and place, um, because just as our tupuna, I mean, it's about sort of clearing that path um, and ensuring that, um, you yeah, sort of safety and success. Um, yeah, any other context there, Mitch? Um, probably just to pick up on your um, your wakamaram around ruku, puya, taupua. So we, we hear topua and references like manu topua, um, kainga topua as well, as, as a temporary abode. So if you, you envisage the picture that Jamie um, painted for us when you're surfing and you, you duck under the wave, then you come up and then it's that brief temporary pause, that rest period before you then, you then carry on. Um, and of course, if we think of our fuel fuel, um, I feel for you in terms of movement as a as a whirlwind, but also as a whirlpool. So in reference to, to the, the challenges that our tupuna would have experienced along the way in, um, in pathing a course to, to Aotearoa. And we, we're aware of some of those references. So uh, those who are familiar with Tikaroa Maui, when you walk into the house to the right above the window, there's a big carving. And on that carving, it shows the, the different waka that come over, but in the middle of there, it shows this big whirlpool. Um, and some of us on, on the call will be familiar with its, with its name, uh, known as a, as a taniwa, uh, but in reference to the korokoro, or the, the throat, um, te, te korokoro te parata. Uh, so we definitely hear, hear that korero in Aotea waka um, history. You hear it in other histories of other waka, such as Te Arawa. Um, so there are other, other iwi who still reference this particular taniwa, this particular challenge that they had to overcome uh, while they were charting a, a, a course to, to Aotearoa. So I always liken this karakia a bit like all of the other um, tapuai waka and awawa of Aotea. Um, it's, it's actually what we go through internally. So if you think about, you know, we're, we're embarking on a new kaupapa or a particular taki, you know, you imagine you're sort of standing on the water's edge and you're thinking, geez, you know, I'm, I'm going forth and I want to do this. 
and you know, and we all sort of we all hope for the best, you know, kaki waiora, but we know that you know um, we're always going to be faced with challenges. You know, that's the our feel feel, and that there are those ups and downs. You know, we're going to go through moments where in dark places underwater, um, but what this sort of says is we will emerge again, and katopua you'll have that breath, you know, that that sigh, and then. Um, and then it sort of links back just to sort of remind us that, you know, kei matanuku, kei matarangi, those elements um, that provide us energy, inspiration, that guide us, um, and that it reminds us, kei te uru o Hawaiki, nui e tauana. Um, so that, in a sense, is a, a reference to, you know, from whence we've come. And so when we think about that, you know, we were often drawing inspiration from our past and our origins and our identity to be able to guide us forward. Um, and so think about it, because, you know, this is the thing, this goes through, you know, our minds every day. So that's that's the wonder of these karakia. Mm. Although it's actually referencing ko te ara o tokomaru, but it's actually ko te ara o te tangata. You know, we, we, we confront these challenges on a daily basis to look to emerge and we draw strength from those, you know, from the natural elements and physical dimensions of our natural world. Mm. And that, that's a lovely way of putting it, because what it does is that it, means that it has um, application for us in a modern context. Um, the things that we experience on a day-to-day -day, um, basis, the, the, um, the aspirations that we have and the desire to achieve those aspirations, understanding and recognizing the number of challenges that sit in front of us that um, create barriers, uh, create fences uh, to be in our way to stop us from achieving these things. Um, and the the resilience, the resoluteness um, of the individual in order to push through those barriers to then be able to achieve their own um, aspirations. Uh, so it's it's a really lovely way of, of seeing it because it, it then means, um, it provides um, good application in modern day context from, from my perspective. Uh, and probably just picking up on a couple of other things that Jamie was mentioning in terms of a wide area um, so, of course, as, as was discussed, the wide area is a particular type of karakia, and if we, um, if we see ourselves, if the image we paint in our mind is being in a real deep, dense bush that's real difficult to get through, um, the purpose of the wide area is to start cutting away a lot of that, um, a lot of those bushes to be able to clear the path so that the path is a lot more easier for you to travel and easier for those behind you to be able to travel on. Um, and we, as, as a tāne, um, if you ever find yourself in a position where you don't have a kai koranga, uh, we often hear wairea being, being um, recited by tāne as a group goes on to a, a marae. Um, at a urupa, for example, when the tupapaku is coming into the urupa is another another place where you tend to hear wider as well. So these are these are other ways that you can apply this particular um, karakia. But again, if we consider its meaning, um, the things that we've discussed, uh, being able to say this in the time when uh, you're charting a new pathway, um, in a time when you have some aspirations or goals that you want to achieve and understanding there are barriers um, but being able to get people in behind that, uh, to be able to motivate others, to be able to drive others uh, to achieve uh, the collective purpose, the collective aspiration. Uh, these are all, all ways that you can utilize this, but a, a, a fairly versatile karakia, um, just like the other ones in our, in our calendar. Yeah, and the, I mean, the only other one Mitch mentioned this, so you often might hear in a Waikore or Taku Manu Taupua. Mm. Um, so Manu Taupua, um, is hetute, like a, cent a century, century of a path. So someone who protects and guides and maintains a path. So that's the other good thing is that, you know, within the, the imagery here and the particular kupu, you know, you can draw upon it for whai kōrero or even, you know, little karanga. Um, as with all of these karakia, you know, our wahine, you can actually do these as pao um, or, you know, add, add, a, add a, a rangi to them. Um, and you know, and you'll find what what works for you. Um, and as I always say, you know, there are particular karakia that you get straight away, and there are some that just struggle. And I'm I'm the same. There's there's a few karakia that no matter how often I try and 
and that just says they're not the ones for me. And so I think, you know, as we go through our calendar of karanga, uh, you'll find those particular, of, of karakia, sorry, you'll find those particular karakia that resonate with you personally. Tāne mā, wāine mā, um, it's, it's a karakia, a versatile karakia for us all. Um, and probably just picking up on what Jamie was just talking about, I, I always find the, the taki, if I can find a real nice um, beat uh, when I recite a karakia, it makes it a lot more easier for me to remember it. Um, so I definitely encourage that to be able to find your own taki, your own, your own beat, your own rhythm, um, because that really helps to, um, to hold that in, in, in your kia au ki um, to, to hold it within so that you can then draw on that whenever you need it. I don't know if we explained this last, but um, so we got, you know, kei mata anuku, kei mata rangi. So, you know, when we're talking about mata, we're talking about the apex or the point. And kei te uru o huaiki, we're talking about the crown. Um, so, you know, that's that's very much about, you know, you've come through that moment, you've taken breath, and then you're basically, you know, the heavens are your are where you're heading, which is a beautiful thing, you know. And so you can sort of build this in, you can say, you know, Ki aro te te tiro ki mata anuku ki mata harangi ki te uru Hawaii ki nui e tauana. You know, that's that ultimate sort of goal that we constantly strive for. And that's another feature of a lot of our karakia and our foundational kōrero. You often, you know, a lot of, uh, whether it's tātwaki or particular um, apakura and other uh, deities that are referenced in our foundational narratives, um, they're often on a journey to sort of seek that ultimate goal um, and that very much speaks to the sort of Māori worldview and the Māori mind is that, you know, we're in this perpetual cycle of evolving, learning and developing and always sort of, there's always potential. Um, so, you know, there's always more to learn. There's always, you know, we always more to grow, um, which I think is a beautiful thing. Some probably say, well, but you're, you're forever in reach of trying to get there, but depends on your perspective and, and how, you, um, how you view that. Uh, so this one here is uh, our, our karakia for this month. Uh, this is another lovely karakia. It's, uh, it's one verse of a, of a number of verses. Um, those who, who are aware of this karakia, of course, will recognize that it's one of Huirangi's karakia that, that he wrote. Um, I recall Tupoihi um, mentioning a particular word when he had often talked um, or discussed Huirangi's karakia and Huirangi said to him one day that he refers to these karakia as, as waka kao, um, so a, a collection, a collection of words, a collection of concepts, a collection of ideas from uh, traditional karakia um, and we, we see a lot of these lines in in different karakia, we see it in a particular karakia. One of the Paimarere karakia, for example, um, has has a lot of these these lines. Um, and this one refers to particular tohu, to particular signs. So, as we talked about um, the signs and challenges that our our tupuna would have experienced on Tokomaru um, and their um, their venture to, to Aotearoa, some other, other signs that we used at the time, of course, were, were two, um, or stars or constellations. And this karakia refers to a couple of um, stars and one constellation. Um, can we stop sharing that ocean? And I'll, I just want to share another... Um, another image. Can you guys see that? Oh, no. So, of course, this is the, the Inua here, uh, northeast and then east. Uh, so probably about four or five weeks ago, those who, who like to get up early in the morning, um, walk in the mornings, you may have seen the four stars or the four planets um, in alignment. So Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn just above that. This image here is the image that you would see um, at about four o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, just for those that, that may be familiar with these. Um, so of course we have what, what we refer to as mata ero, so red face, of course. 
uh, Mars. And Venus down here is known as Tawera. And whenever you you hear Tawera, you 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 tend to see the following words: um, Tawera te utu takiata. Yeah. Um, so it's so ata, of course, meaning morning. Taki in this context to mean um, still flashing, still blinking. Uh, so the the star that still shines, that still blinks, that still flashes in the morning. So it's the, it's the last star that you see in the morning sky is Tawera or, or Venus. So in the particular karakia, I'll just stop sharing. And if you want to bring it back up again, Ocean. In, in this karakia for this month, it talks about um, some of those stars, of course. So Mata'uro, Mars. Um, Totoru, those who are familiar with Orion's belt, uh, the pot, uh, the teapot, uh, those those three stars is Totoru. Our our name for that is Totoru, and of course Tawera Tewitu Takiata. Um, in terms of the first line, so uh, Tuhi e Tuhi Rakoe Uenuku. We, we may be familiar in this context with Uenuku being um, the rainbow, colors of the rainbow. Uh, tuhi, of course, so if we're saying e tuhi rākoe uenuku i te rangi, um, so tuhi we, we tend to hear or refer to as, as writing. Uh, this one's, of course, the writing of the sky, and we, we hear that in a well-known Taranaki waiata. Um, and uh, some may see that in reference to the, the different colors that we see in, in the morning sky and liken that to a rainbow. Um, to hear you also hear in reference to te uira, so a particular form of lightning. Uh, so if we consider lightning, we, we have the, uh, the single bolt of lightning, we have the flash in the sky, so the, um, and then we have fingers, almost fingered lightning. So these different forms of, of lightning um, that we see in our, our evening and our night sky. Uh, so etu i rākoe e winuku e te rangi a newa newa. Um, my, I've, I've sort of seen two understandings of a newa newa. Um, one in reference to um, the particular colors of uenukus and, and those colors that, that we see in the morning sky. So we may not see all of the colors of the rainbow, but we definitely see a range of colors. Um, so that's that's one meaning that, that I understand. Um, and I've, I've also seen it as a duality in terms of um, a fio fio and a newa newa. So itarangi a fio fio itarangi a newa newa. Um, so different forms of um, uh, of of what the sky looks like. Uh, have have you seen references to our newer newer, Jamie? Yeah. So um, as you say, there's um, you know te rangi te rangi te rangi newa newa. You you have um, concept of tuhi. So there's there's a particular karakia and a poi that was performed for opening of houses, which is te tuhi, te tuhi keirunga, te tuhi e rangi, te tuhi, uh, which basically um, talks about how the light starts to adorn the sky. Um, and so, you know, that's the end within um, many of those karakia, which talk about the transition from, from night to dawn. Um, you see references to tuhi, rarama, um, which are all talking about glow or ura, which we have there. And then you often have um, te rangi a newa newa. So, um, you know, kai ke kwe ki te rangi a newa newa ki te rangi a niwa niwa. So you often have rangi a newa newa and rangi a niwa niwa together in those particular um, karakia, which really reference, um, as Mitch has said, you know, um, various sort of light um, that you see. And, and, you know, and if you do sort of, walk early in the morning and you start to witness and view that transition from you know that early dawn it's amazing the colors you see and so you know e tuhi rā koe uanuku i te rangi a newa newa. so we're likening you know that the various sort of forms of light that you see in the morning 
um, to that of Uenuku of the rainbow. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's beautiful imagery. Um, but yeah, a number of our uh, poi and karakia reference tuhi, uenuku, and rangi aniwaniwa, and rangi aniwaniwa. Um, hmm. um, then we come down into um, the different parts of, of the morning. So, uh, of course, there's, there's a lot more uh, words that would be fi- that would be familiar with. Uh, so, atapo, atatu, um, takiri te ata. Um, so for, for me, when, when I think of takiri te ata, uh, the image that comes to mind for me when I think of takiri is when you strike a match, then you just see that little that little explosion that, that happens. Um, that's what I liken takiri to, takiri te ata, when, when the, the sun is just starting to rise and then we see a, a bloom of light. Um, ura, ura te ata, so of course... Uh, uh, um, we, we may a, a different color in the morning. Um, we we hear similar words in in other karakia. Uh, so in, in wakataka te hau, um, we 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 see atakura. So a particular um, glow, a particular color um, in the morning sky. Uh, hi hi. So of course those who are familiar with the word hi hi would see that as um, is jealous, um, pu hai hai. Um, we also see it in words like kitty hai hai, um, the old traditional practice. Um, but the the separation, the rendering apart of, of day and night. And then this kupu kahura, kahura. Um, those those who have been to Te Pāua may be familiar with the, the term because it's you you hear it at Pariyaka. So there's two commands that tend to go out um, on the morning of the Pāua. Um, one is e tau, so to for everyone to light their fires for the hangi all at the same time, with the idea of them all then being raised at the same time. And when it's nearly time to, to pull up the hangi, um, you'll then hear another call, e ura, to then uncover the hangi. And then it provides a certain time frame for everyone to then get all their kai ready, put into the kete, into the kono, and then get ready to then take it over to, to Toro Anui. Um, but that's that's where I tend to hear the word um, ura or hura. Um, wakaroa no au, Jamie? Yeah, well, so just, just um, so again, you know, the picture here is um, you're standing there and you're starting to see the light emerge through the dark. Like our sort of rainbow, you know, that light starts to form. Um, at that at that transition, you can still see Mars, Totoru is starting to fade. And then um, as Mitch has said, you know, the last star you see in the morning is Tawira, and that's why they call Kotawira Te Wetu Takiata or Te Wetu Oteata. Um, and you see Tawira's in a lot of our uh, waya, Taranaki Waiata. Mm-hmm. And then you're starting to see the emergence of the new dawn, you know, takiri te ata, ura te ata. So this glow, ura, ura is, the, it's a red glow, but it's that, that glow starts to appear. And, you know, it's like when you're standing and you see a ridge line as the sun starts to rise, and then hai hai te ata, kahura. And then, you know, that morning light is sort of cutting through the darkness and then it reveals itself. Um, and then kao, kao. Kao te po. That night has now transitioned to day and takina te po kitua and you know night is put aside um, for a later period which is that sort of cycle we have again. Um, yeah so I think yeah that, that's 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 key imagery here um, and I don't know um, Heata I think Heata has got a reference to Unuku me te niwa niwa um, so there's a verse in Heata, yeah. um, which references Uenuku in our new uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's a verse in um, Te Kuro Te Ata, the, the Pai Māori Re Karakia, yeah. e tu Uenuku e Tarangi, mm-hmm. a whiu whiu e Tarangi a new Uenua. Yeah. Um, um, and then, yeah, just, and um, there's other, you know, our tūpuna sort of tamarau te hiki ngārangi, so there's um, other sort of, Karaki and Waiata that um, interestingly sort of placed Tamaro within the context of, you know, he came from the heavens. So 
um, it's, you know, sort of says, kei te tuhi, kei te rapa, um, kei te hana te uira. And so, you know, again, sort of that light, Mitch was talking about lightning and that sort of flashing, kei te a niwa niwa, kei te a hei hei, ko te tai o tamarau, te heke ngārangi. Um, which when you think about that, you know, it's sort of um, a likening how the sky is lit up with lightning and all of these other things and um, being that of tamaro. you know, when you think about the path he, he came down. And then it says, whakapiri ki te hema hema, ka heke kiraro ki te ihorangi kaputa, ko te iwie, which basically talks about, you know, again, that symbolism, that imagery saying, well, tamaro coming from the heavens um, and then coming down to... Um, to us on earth. Mm. Uh, just noticed the part I that Manu uh, sent through, text through, where, where is Puang in this karakia. Um, so this, um, this of course is one, just one of um, Huirangi's uh, karakia that, that he composed. He, he of course composed the, um, the Matariki or the Puanga karakia as well. That that we hear during during this time too, um, but didn't capture it in this particular karakia, but definitely captured it in another. Um, so at the end, of course, as Jamie mentioned, ka ao, ka ao, ka ao te po. So the the night is coming turning into day. Um, you may see other references ka ao, ka ao, ka ao te ra, so that the day is getting brighter and brighter. Um, but again, it goes back to this kōrero that we shared at one of the other wānanga, kōrero no, no pariaka, um, so kōrero from pariaka ko te pō, te kaihari o te rā, o te ao, ko te mate te kaihari o te ora. So the, the, the night is the bringer of day, and uh, death is the bringer of life. And takina te pō kitua to then push the, the night back. Hmm. And this is a beautiful way to start your morning. Um, and that's why, um, you know, when we think about puanga in this time of year, uh, but this is a karakia and there's other little shorter variants. Like I, I taught my babies um, just a basic one where they, I get them to just go outside in the morning. No mai e te rā, welcoming the sun. Doesn't always come in Wellington, but no mai e te rā. <laughs> Kauea mai ngā hua, bring forth those gifts and those blessings. Hei waka tau mai, that we may receive. Hei waka tau atu, that we may give. Tuturu o witi waka maua ki um, And so, um, and I like that. And I, I like this because, you know, it, it reconnects us with those elements of our natural world. And, you know, you'll see that as a theme through all of these karakia, right? Because if you go out at that right time in the morning, hoping that you just see the emergence of that light, that Mars or Matawero is still there and, you know, Tawera, and start to sort of look for those those tohu and those symbols. Um, but yeah, and there's other just shorter ones. I think it's just getting into that that rhythm. Uh, just got another message. Hopefully the Preston Ano has got sound. Uh, I was just noting the text there. Um, Hwani just sent something through as well in terms of the, there is a light spectrum from the rising sun when there is an early icy light shower in the winter months. So again, those different types of colors that we see. Yeah, yeah and then, um, and you'll see that if, you know, if you did get out walking early in the morning, you'll actually see the different colors and, and light. I mean, and you know, um, for those of our whānau that are minded, you know, there are opportunities to be able to um, wakahi kōrero, or what you know, because as as Huirangi has done here, he waka kau. Um, it's basically just bringing together, um, you know, those symbols and those elements. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I like to use this one in the morning. So especially at Wananga, when um, we do the karakia kite uranga o te ra, when we do the karakia to the rising of the sun, this is one that I I like to do. Uh, it, it has two verses before it. So those who are familiar with Tenei Te Ara, or Ko Te Ara Kairunga, Ko Te Ara Tenei Tipua, that's the first verse, then it rolls into another verse around Te Umurangi, and then comes into E Tuhi Rākoe Uenuku. But that's a lovely series of karakia 
to be able to recite in the morning, especially during one in the time? Um, I think just, you know, the com context. So as Mitch has said, you know, utilising it in the morning, um, you can actually sort of a variant of this can be used, you know, um, when the whānau pani come back into the house. Um, so, um, you know, that coming from, you know, we've, we've had the nehu, um, and then so we've got, um, you know, bringing the whānau back into te ao marama. Um, this as a karakia can be uh, utilised for that purpose as well. Because um, what you're basically saying is the analogy here is you're wanting the whānau to come back into the light. Um, so you're saying, yeah, e tuhi rā koe uanukui tarangi a niwa niwa. And you don't have to reference the, the um, stars, but you'd say tākiri te ata, ura te ata, hai hai te ata, ka hura, ka au, ka au, ka au, te pō tākina, te pō ki tua, tihei mauri ora. Um, and it's nice, simple, because, you know, that's the key thing when, we've, when we do that whai or when the whānau pani have come back from the urupā, we're always looking for... Um, or which basically, you know, high, 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 high at the poor katakiri mai ra ko te ata, because you're wanting to sort of shed the darkness and bring that sort of, you know, that new dawn, that light. Um, and so, you know, that's for a kai kōrero, but also for a karanga, you know, when you're doing a bit of a karanga as the whānau are coming in, um, you know, tākiri te ata, ura te ata, hai, hai te ata, kā hura, kā o, kā o, kā o, te pō tākina, te pō ki tua. Um, as a short karanga, because that's that process, you're sort of, you know, you're wanting that sort of new dawn, that new, you know, the turning the page in terms of looking forward to um, overcoming um, or coming out of the darkness. So, that, yeah, so that's the other thing with all of these karaki, you know, there are, um, the wonderful thing about them, you can pull bits out for karanga um, or utilise them within kōrero, kai kōrero. Just picking up on the question from Lani. So yes, so you, you can just say this karakia. Um, we've purposely didn't, we purposely haven't included a, a closing to this, to any of the karakia, um, because you, you can close them in a number of different ways. Uh, we tend to hear e rungo o kiriaki kirunga tu turu akamaua kia tina. So that's one way to close it. You could simply say haumie huie taiki. Well, you could also just say e hai. Hmm. which is the old people used to do that a lot um, and there's been some interesting discussion about you know uh, hmm. and um, in my view and I've got a whole lot of recordings of our kuya they were doing haumie huie taiki e um, and so um, it's one of those examples of where, I mean, we tend to sort of try and segregate the role of the male and female uh, in terms of um, particularly around some of those things, but certainly from a, you know, a lot of the old poi that were being performed at Parihaka um, in the day, you know, they were very much, they were karakia. And many of the karakia that we recite today and uh, um, are actually a lot of the poi that were being performed by our, our kuya. Uh, but yeah, but again, you know, you, you find what's going to be comfortable for you in the ending. I mean, yeah, air high is a beautiful ending as well. Because you're putting the sort of exclamation mark on what you've just said. Uh, so again, another versatile karakia. Um, if, if you do include the, the stars, um, it's ideal to do it in the morning. Um, if you're starting a kaupapa in the morning, it's a great karakia to start that kaupapa with. Uh, it could be a class, it could be a, a hui, um, it could be a wānanga, um, but when, when, when you utilise those stars, it's best to, to, um, to do that in the morning. Uh, but as Jamie noted, if you remove those stars and just focus on etu hirakwe, unakwe, tarangia, niwa, niwa, tākiri te ata, ura te ata, it then makes it a lot more versatile. Um, and then you can say, you know, hi, hi, tiata, kitatihi o taranaki kahura, kao, kao. You know, and then you can start throwing in little bits, um, you know, referencing sort of location, wani. Um, you know, hi, hi, tiata, kirunga, kitatihi o taranaki kahura, kao, kao, kao te pō, takina te pō ki tua, tihei mauri ora. 
And that's the other thing you could do here is actually tihei modi order at the end of this particular karakia. Um, just noting a comment that Twani made um, just in relation to Puanga. So, of course, now is the time that we tend to see Puanga and Matariki coming up on the eastern horizon um, early in the morning. And for us, Totoru is one of our markers that helps us to identify Puanga. Um, so those who are familiar will know that the center star of Totoru, if you follow that straight up, you'll always find Puanga. And I know, uh, Mitch, I think we're going to have a wānanga on Puanga. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are a whole lot of narratives which speak to the fact that, um, you know, tapa te ingoa a Puanga, that um, Puanga uh, took its name as, um, it was referenced as ko te pua tawiwi uh, o Tautoru. Um, and so, um, and a pua tawiwi is basically a bird snaring. Um, sort of, yeah, it's a bird snaring sort of figure. Um, and that's why, and I can see why our tupuna sort of, sort of called it that, because if you know, because Tautoru is pretty easy to see in the sky. And if you know that, you know, it says, um, hey, he pua ara ko te pua tawhipi o tautoru, ko te mahi o tēnā tangata o tautoru, he mahi haere manu. And so, you know, again, it likens um, tautoru and, and what he's responsible for as being a bird snarer. And the, the, the pua tawhipi is basically that, that cluster above tautoru. And as Mitch was saying, you know, it's an easy way to be able to locate puanga at that point in time. Um, but we're going to have a separate wānanga on Puanga, aren't we, Mitch? Which is going yeah. to be pretty cool. Mm. So probably just to give a... Well, actually, I'll, I'll wait to see if there's any other part and I'll mention that in the wrap-up. Or any other call at all. Um, so just for, for those who, who may have seen it, there's four pages that Huirangi created in terms of karakia, and there's probably about um, eight to 12 different verses of that of that real long karaki, and this is one small portion um, of that. But again, with us just delving deeper into the words, into the understanding, we can see the ways that we can apply it in, in modern lifetimes and in, in our everyday life. Um, Pātai Akoto, any questions, any code at all? Just the final one, so just, you know, when you think about the context here, transitioning from night to day or a new dawn, so that's the context of the karakia, so, you know, when you're thinking you're, you're embarking on a new kaupapa, um, and so, you know, although we say you do it in the morning, but, you know, in context, you know, if you're, you're, you're turning a new leaf or you're welcoming in a new, yeah, new kaupapa or whatever, you, that, that, this is appropriate as well, um, because, you know, when we think about new kaupapa, it's about that potential and that transition from one state to another. Um, and, you know, we're always sort of seeking te ao marama, um, that enlightenment. Um, there was just the, what is the significance of the three planets lining up at that time? It's a good question. Um, it's, it's probably not a question that I could um, answer with any authority though, Hwani, but it's something that we've seen in the night sky over these last um, six weeks, so it was four planets um, last month, and as Saturn is rising higher and higher, um, we're just seeing the three now. Yeah, just on that, so there's, there's um, some rangaho going on at the moment, which is sort of pulling together on the back of the Matariki Fund, um, and so there's a lot of, there's some work that will be embarked on, which is looking at um, Puanga Matariki and Nga Mahi Kokorangi, so a lot of, um, you know, you, no doubt many of you may have listened to um, Rangi Mā Tāmua, um, and, you know, a lot of his um, understanding of, of the stars and the like, but there's an initiative that will kick off later this year, which is going to focus on um, those whetu, um, those symbols um, on our side, um, and then sort of looking at a lot of the menu, manuscript material. So there's a lot of manuscript material that we have um, from Taranaki that speak to a lot of the seasons and, and all of those sorts of things. 
um, which cover off some of the matters you, that, that question you raised, Juani. Um, and but but actually, you know, it's one thing. I mean, I've I've got access to the manuscripts, reading them on paper. But actually, you know, having having those of our Fano that are, um, you know, in Mahiani to Mahi Kōkōrangi um, would be really good. And I think that's probably a karanga. So if we do know any of our whānau that are um, interested in, in that, they'll be up, they'll be hui later in the year to try and bring together um, those with that expertise and passion. Um, just another question from the Preston Wano. So we, where would we find the recordings of previous whānanga? Um, if you go onto our website, there's a media page there and that'll take you to our YouTube channel. And you'll you'll see the last um, couple of um, karakia wānanga that we've done. So we'll, we'll do the same with this recording. We'll um, we'll put that up on YouTube and we'll share that out again as well, uh, just as an opportunity for those who one weren't able to make it, but those who are here and just want to listen to it again. Um, so of course we can see the date of our next wānanga uh, with third. 6th of July and the dates of our other wānanga leading up to 4 December. Um, probably just to profile a couple of other kaupapa that we've got going on. So those who who would have received the email would know that um, Maunga negotiations update happened last night and there's another one tomorrow night at 7, Jamie. Um, so definitely jump on to 7, isn't it? Yeah, seven, te kuri mako. So um, look at the Facebook page and yeah, no mai hara mai whanau. So yeah, some good progress being been made there. Mm. Yeah, so on, if you go to the te kuri mako Facebook page at seven o'clock, you'll see the, the live streaming of, of the Maunga negotiation update. Um, we're going to have a iwi update as well, just a, a quarterly update just so that we can inform Anu of some of the big kaupapa that's happening in, in our roe and, and for our iwi. So we're aiming to do that next Sunday um, from 10 till 12, but you'll you'll receive pānui, uh, probably just advance, um, advance notice. Uh, and in terms of what Jamie was talking about, we're, we're looking at organising a wānanga, a puanga wānanga for 17th of July. Um, it came about from two, well, a couple of avenues really. One through the creation of the roadmap for our um, charitable trust to Edinger. So now that that's um, got a much um, narrow focus, there's a lot more momentum behind that um, around rungawa, around well-being, around connecting, uh, and one of that is understanding what puanga or matariki, what this time of year means to us from a Ngāti Mutunga um, perspective. So on the 17th of July, we just want to have a wānanga at the pā and just start delving into that so that we can start to plan ahead for these next nine years coming for the public holiday for Matariki. Um, so part of that is one of our uri, um, he's a Rattenberry, he's a senior lecturer up at Auckland University or University of Auckland. He's an astrophysicist, so he's going to come and um, deliver a corridor for us around astrophysics and and what these constellations and stars mean from that perspective. Um, Ruakere will, will come along as well, Ruakere Hond, and just give a, um, a Taranaki perspective around Puanga, and that will lead in nicely into a discussion for, for the Ano to consider how we would like to celebrate and acknowledge Puanga Matariki on an annual basis. Um, part of that then leads into some possible research, possible projects. So like Jamie said, if there are any Ano out there who are really interested in te korangi and, and, and astronomy, um, definitely reach out to us um, because we, we do want to ensure that we have some of our Ano who are um, spearheading some of these projects for us. Uh, and even doing some of this research for us because we, of course, don't have all the capacity in the office. So we need to be able to reach out far and wide to ensure that we can get these projects and cope up, up and running. Just the only other Panui Fano is we have Te Rao Pumare on the Saturday, the 25th of June. Um, because uh, Tamawahine is being rebuilt currently, it's going to be online. 
Um, and so just we'll, we'll, we'll partner with this out on our Facebook page, but um, it will be, I suppose, or it's, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock on um, Saturday, the 25th of June. Um, it'll be about a two hour program. So just pulling the program together at the moment with the PAR trustees. Um, but the areas of focus um, will be sort of hauora. Um, so we're going to have the, um, the head of the Māori Health Authority will be um, giving a bit of a quarter on that take. Um, we'll also have uh, our own tawaka. We'll be talking about kaurora. Um, so the housing and financial literacy program. Um, and we're likely to have a little segment also on um, Puanga and Matariki, just given the um, national holiday is the, that Friday, the 24th. So yeah, just keep an eye out on, on our Kurimaku Facebook, but we'll also partner it out on our Facebook. Um, and one thing, um, if we have any, and I know we have some mate of mutunga, given we're not going to be able to do it in person, there will be, talking to the trustees and ability to have um, just some of the photos in a mihi to those of our whānau that have passed in the last year. Um, and so, yeah, we'll put a bit of a pānui out on that, probably via email, because we still don't know our whānau, just so we can do that and acknowledge those of our mate that have passed. Oh, ka nui ngā kōrero. Mihi ana kia koe, Mitch. Mihi ana kia tātou. Yeah, mm. so kia koe, Mitch. Ka pai. O te mea nōra ki a koto, ko urumai a nōra ki tēnei o ngā ware, e ware kōrero, e ware kōrero o mutunga. Uh, nō reira, uh, te pai i ngā kōrero, ko kōrero ia ki a koto. Uh, nō reira, a te rātau, uh, a te ramarama, ka, ka aro a nōra tātou ki tētei o ngā karakia i roto i te maramatanga o, o ngā ti mutunga mo te tau nei. Uh, nō reira, ka waka kapi ake rai ngā ua tangi i timata ai tā tātou nei hui, ara ko te karakia, taki atu rā, te rā karakia i aku ai tātou i tēnei pō. Uh, nō reira, e tu i rā koe ue nuku e te rangi a newe newe ko mata ue roko tau toru ko tā ue rata ue tū taki ata. Tā kiri te ata ura, te ata ai ai, te ata ka ura, ka ao, ka ao, ka ao te pō, taki na te pō ki tua. Tu turu o iti waka maua kia tīna, tīna, ui e, tāiki e. Tumari, tēnā koutou.